Hey guys, welcome to Keep It Spiritual with myself, Chris Meredith. Now, first of all, we are now on Patreon. Yes, we are. If you head to the description below, become a member of Keep It Spiritual and help me keep doing what I do best. I thank you very much for that. And of course, while you're here, remember to subscribe as well and give us a massive like. Now, in this interview, I bring you world-renowned medium and psychic, the lovely Darren Britton. Now, Darren Britton, first of all, has been all around around the world helping people connect with spirit but his enthusiasm and his style as well I absolutely love and I say he's like a breath of fresh air and of course the lovely Darren Britton has got a beautiful book coming out which is called From Innocence to Innocence it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be out very very soon so here is the beautiful Darren Britton well lovely Darren Britton welcome to Keep It Spiritual it's a pleasure to have you on the show my friend how are you doing i'm really well i'm very very good thank you yeah i'm fine considering it's quite early for me <laughs> and for me mate and for me i was like maybe i should have pushed it back a bit but anyway we're here we're doing it mate absolutely yeah. loving it so darren can we start at the beginning with you so mm. when did your journey with spirit begin well, I mean, you speak to most people, most mediums, and they always talk about, you know, stories of being playing with spirit children as a child and seeing things from a very young age. And honestly, I never did. I was never one of those children that um, had the presence of the spirit world consciously anyway um, from a young age. So I went to the Spiritist Church at 17 after seeing lights around people from 14 onwards and mislabeling them just purely as migraine attacks, which I used to also suffer. Um, and it was really only the first time in a spiritualist church at 17 that I started to see things. I'd never had any experience of the spirit world before. Um, I was given a communication by another medium who said, you're very psychic and you're going to do this work. And within a year, you'll be on platform. And I just thought that I'm like fresh meat in the church. Let's just recruit him. Let's, <laughs> Let's get him. <laughs> this young boy. Um, but that night, later on that night, I started to see things. And that really was the first time that consciously, I would say that I was aware of the spirit world. So it kind of happened really organically with you, I suppose, didn't you? You just went down the kind of traditional route to the spiritualist church and no expectations, but it's happened, you know, naturally for you. So can, can you remember when you first had your like first interaction with spirit, Darren? That was pretty much it at the spiritualist church. That was pretty much it. When, when the medium said to me, you see lights around people and, and I hadn't told a soul. I hadn't told anybody in that place that, that knew me or my family. So um, she said something which, which I, was confused about how she could know that. Mm. And then it was only at, towards the end of the evening when I started to see these images and had these feelings that I knew that what I was experiencing was the spirit world. And especially when I'd spoken to the recipient and she was validating what I was experiencing, then there was a reality to it. And whilst I'd read books about spiritualism and mediums, there was no personal experience until that point. And, and even now I'm very much the kind of person, unless I experience it, it's not real. And that's not to discount other people's experience. That's real for them. But, you know, and if, if you've seen a unicorn, I'm really pleased for you. Um, but unless I've seen a unicorn, they're not real. You know, So I've always been very evidential in the way that I approach this subject. It has to be evidence to me. No, but that's a great way to be and a great way to work. And I suppose, you know, your journey, everyone's journey is, you know, personable to them. But that's a great way to be is, you know, when you see it, which is true, you know, it's real. And I always think that, you know, other people might discount stuff and be like, oh, it's not real. But you've been through it yourself and you know that. And, you know, you're not going to lie to yourself, are you? <laughs> or anything like that. There's a medical problem going on. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think I think generally, you know, if we're of sound mind and <laughs> then generally we know the difference between reality and, and non-reality, I guess. So, yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. It is. It is. So what was it like discovering you was a medium, Darren? Um, I think it was more confusing and conflicting and strange for other people around me. My family, I think, were probably more nervous and anxious about what that represented or what it meant than I was, because from my perspective, my experience, it was only ever kind, it was only ever loving, the feelings I was experiencing were only ever positive, the messages that I delivered were only ever elevating and kind and positive. So for me, um, from the work perspective, it was always a very positive thing. I think it came into my experience at 17 when I really wasn't sure of who I was, you know, I wasn't quite kind of sure about my sexuality. There was a lot of things going on within me that made me feel, I guess, probably less than 
or inadequate in some way. And I guess on a personal level, mediumship, being able to tap into something that felt very good and that had meaning for other people on some level, I became identified with that and it made me feel more confident in myself. And, and now looking back at that, there's a part of that whilst it was necessary, it isn't healthy either because then your sense of self is, is, is gained from something separate to you, which isn't always authentic, but mediumship is authentic and spiritualism is authentic. But, but as far as building who I am on, on an external aspect, um, isn't always kind of authentic in that respect. It's not sustainable. So, so that was it. I think it, it brought so much at a time in my life that I really needed to feel more. Um, and, and I think that's, that's how it felt. Mm. Yeah, no, totally, totally, totally agree with that as well. You know, many people go through that, but I suppose it's, you know, it's finding who you are, but who you are as also a medium as well within yeah. the room. So yeah, yeah. It's great to hear that. So what's it like working with spirit every single day? Well, it's not every single day. Let me be very clear, clear about that because I'm, I'm not one of those mediums and that sounds unkind of those mediums, but I'm not, I'm not a medium that is constantly tapping into the spirit world and checking, are you there? Are you with me? Because there really is no separation between us and the spirit. You know, I may not actively demonstrate mediumship every day. I am in touch with spirit because I'm in touch with me, you know, and it's not separate to me. So, so my awareness of the spirit world every day is present constantly, but I'm not always actively using it in a sitting, a demonstration or teaching. Um, but it is, I say a privilege, but that suggests that somebody's chosen and, you know, this is a gift to you. And, and I really don't believe that a, a, at all. But I think to be part of something that has a potential to elevate, heal, um, help people understand, I think that is very powerful. You know, and I think we all have that capacity. I think any of, any of the things that we're passionate about, whether it be singing, music, performance, mediumship, being a doctor, whatever it is, anything that's passionate to us, I think we have a duty to express that in the world, to benefit the world. And being part of that is phenomenal. Being able to, to find that passion and utilize that to elevate and bring something positive is, is a privilege. That, that's a gift. It mm. totally is. Well, something that you're going to be telling us about your passion is your new book that's going to be coming out that I'm so excited about. And can I just say the title is amazing, From Innocence to Innocence, The Journey to Mediumship. It's fabulous. So what inspiration for the book, Darren? Well, thank you. I mean, I, I, I can't even remember how the title came about. I, I like words. I, I do like words and I like words that sound similar but mean something different. So I think it's a great um, kind of illustration or demonstration of that. But, um, but I think it's also very true. It did start out that I knew nothing. I was completely empty, completely blank, completely in some ways closed, in some ways open. So, so there was an innocence about it. And, and then obviously as we tap into that part of us, it starts to feel that we are more and that there is more. So, so the title is very much a part of the journey, I guess, as well. Um, but it is a very, it's very much a book that starts out autobiographically. It's really primarily to talk about my feelings and my awareness and my childhood to a degree. And then how certain life experiences have helped me to understand not only just more about me, but about my mediumistic faculty and awareness. So there are, you know, a few kind of stories dotted in there that relate to the development of mediumship, because that's really the purpose of the book is, is really for students that, that hopefully they can benefit from. And also, you know, mediums that are already working and, and you know, we're all eternal students. I, I get that. Um, but I think that there are certain stories that are really important. And there are things in that book that don't get spoken about sometimes by our mediumistic teachers. There are stuff that gets, you know, bypassed in development circles. And, and they're really important, vital parts to keep us, when I say safe, I'm, I'm not in the realms of protecting from evil spirits and that nonsense, because that kind of is nonsense. Um, but to look at things like boundaries, you know, whenever we're working with people with need, there is a need to feel safe. There's a need to be clear about where we're willing to be present. And, and so there's a chapter in the book specifically about experiences that I've had where I've been stalked and, 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 and things that, that have been quite important for, for me to learn and, and maintain moving forward, but are also quite you know, helpful for things to be mindful of as students move forward into this, into this arena. Definitely. And I mean, within that, and to put it in a book as well, and it's great to have a book for potential students, people mm. 
that are, you know, working mediums right now. But it's, I mean, I've got a feeling in a sense that the, this book is going to be a bit of a, you know, a modern mediumship guide, which I'm so looking forward to. I mean, even mm. just from the title, I saw the title and I was just like, I love it. Don't even really know what the book's about, but I'm just drawn to it straight away. And I think, you know, it's like a bit of breath of fresh air to have that in this environment because I think it's needed is that like modern push. Yeah, and I think, I, think, I think as well that mediumship evolves as mediums evolve. And I think, you know, we're in a different era. We're in a different time. People's needs are different. I mean, years ago when I first began, I'm sounding like my grandfather now, but when I was a lad, um, you know, people's need for mediumship was really different. You know, maybe eight out of 10 sitters that I saw really wanted that connection to the other world. And now probably it would be five out of 10, you know. And that isn't to say that people are caring less. It's to say that I think the world that we live in is changing and it's a very different era to my granddad's generation. And, and certain beliefs and practices, I think, that we have adopted and inherited from religious belief systems, that's changing. You know, we're, we're, we're looking at religion through different eyes in this generation. And I think mediumship because of that and many other things has to evolve as we do. So the book is modern in that respect. You know, it doesn't talk about protection, doorkeepers, evil spirits, which is very much a remnant of a different era, which is often influenced from religious perspective. So it doesn't contain those elements because I don't think for, for this generation of mediumship is as, um, is, is, is as valid. Um, and I think as well as students, you know, we're questioning more now. I think we're questioning, and we should be questioning, we should be questioning the teachers, our earthly teachers. We should be questioning the spirit world. We really should be, um, you know, finding who we are as an identity, you know? And I think that the, the danger is that when we inherit other people's belief systems, and, and while some of them are phenomenal and, and true and, and will stand the test of time, um, I think we have to test. We have to, by nature of finding, what is working for us we sometimes find what isn't working for us and vice versa it takes so much dedication you know to discover and work with spirit i suppose you know for anyone that's watching and listening do you have any tips or tricks that people can use while they're developing um see i think development of mediumship is it's an ongoing thing because i think so many times in mediumship as students we look out there you know we're looking out there to the spirit world to give us all the answers we're looking out there for them to give me a name and the focus is very much out there and we generally try to assess our internal experience of the spirit world from an external perspective and so it's not really a, a trick or a tip i would say listen to your instinct i would regardless of how you're embarking on your development journey you know certainly see as many teachers as you can read as many books as possible but don't don't give your power away to these people what I mean by that is listen to what your instinct is saying about what you're hearing, about the information you're receiving. Because if that feels right for you, then it is right for you. It's right for your level of understanding and experience in that moment. You know, stay connected to the intuition because then you are intuition. You're learning from that place. Um, the other thing I would say is to really take time to look at yourself because we are the vessels of the spirit. You know, we are the vessel of the spirit. So anything that we experience from the other world is going to be filtered and influenced by the vessel you know so we really is so vital that that we look at ourselves you know look at what we're offering to the spirit world just by our presence look at our fears look at what our belief systems are look at um what you believe to be true about the process of mediumship you know really take time to look at the vessel because the mediumship will be a reflection of you so as we evolve as the pe the person the medium then our experience of the spirit world evolves as well so development really is about revealing what's already there but the key is about looking at what are we present into the experience that limits it so it's already full we don't need to tell the spirit world how to give us evidence we don't need that but what we do need to do is to look at what parts of us are influencing the experience of the spirit world and we can only do that by taking time to look at us and not looking out there so much for the internal validation yeah no it's true it's true because obviously you can't pass on it can't be clear can it if you've still got issues you know no. you've dealt with yourself no I totally totally get that darren i really do so do you think anyone you know can be a medium do you think we've all got the abilities you know to work as a medium or, or not 
I think that we well, certainly we're all spirit. We're already spirit. We're already a soul in this body. But I also have to say that, and this might irritate some people, and, and, and if it does, then that's something for them to look at within themselves in their development, is that, you know, I don't think mediumship is inherent within the soul of everybody. You know, it doesn't matter how much money you throw at it, how many courses you do. If the power of mediumship is not within your soul as an active power to be expressed in the world, then there's no amount of trying can do it. Now, that isn't to say that mediumship development is pointless for, for these people, because what it does do by the very nature of exploring the power of the spirit, it will uncover other things held within that soul's potential. So it may well be that you're not going to be an evidential medium, but it may be present as that you are a wonderful inspirational speaker. It may be that it presents that you are great at writing. There'll be other aspects of the soul that will be tapped into and elevated. So it's not ever pointless to sit for the spirit ever. Um, but I don't believe that the, the power of mediumship is within everybody's potential. That's not why we're all here. But we are all spirit and we all can be spiritualized in a way by remembering that. Mm. So development is always good for that. Yeah, definitely. It'd be interesting if we was all here for, to be mediums. Can you imagine? No one would get anything done. No, no <laughs> I don't want to imagine that. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jeff. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I love it. So, Darren, so what do you love most about bringing you know, people closer to spirit? I think what I love the most about it is that because I think with mediumship, we're not only delivering evidence of life after death, we're delivering, we're demonstrating the reality of the spirit world. And, and what I love about that is that some people will get the message, they'll get the communication, they'll get the evidence, and it will signpost them to the reality that their spirit, that, that, that if my loved ones have survived, then I will survive. So where is this spirit world? What is this spirit world? How can I connect to it? How can I step into my greatness? So, so I always love it when people get the light bulb moment, you know, when that light bulb goes on and it, it spiritualizes them, it taps them into who they are. But of course, there are people that get that wonderful evidence and then they need to keep getting that wonderful evidence to keep feeling safe in the world and that they can carry on. And again, it's still valid, but I always love it when... The, the power of the spirit really signposts people to who they really are. Um, that, because I think that's then when we start to look at how the power of the soul gets to elevate humanity. Because once we are touched by the spirit, once we are spiritualized, when we're put in, in, in touch with that nature, we cease to, to be the same person. You know, we live differently because we have another different perspective. And, and I think it's when we, when we open the lid off the box, we can't ever put the lid back on the box again. So I love it when the power of the spirit really signposts people to who they really are. Yeah, that's good. That's nice to know as well. It's a nice kind of feeling that. Um, so last question for you, Darren. It's gone quick, hasn't it? It's gone really, really quick. I'm like, we've done all my questions. <laughs> it's gone so, so quick. Uh, who's been your biggest spiritual inspiration? Wow. Oh. That's a tough one. I, I always say, and, and I'm, I'm going to stand by this, because I think everything, everything and everybody that comes into our life, even the, the waitress that's rude to you, you know, even the person that is a divine child of God, cleverly disguised as a pig, um, you know, even those people that we might not like have something to teach us. And I think with that in mind, everything has a potential to take us into a different version of ourselves. So, you know, from a mediumistic perspective, there are phenomenal mediums that I've, that I've met and been blessed to work with at times. People like Eileen Davis, who is a phenomenal worker for the spirit, you know. So there are, there are mediums who have inspired me to reach higher in my mediumship. But, but outside of mediumship, everything has the potential for us to, 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 to encourage us to reach higher as well. So I guess that's, that's, it's kind of an, F, an everything answer, really, I guess. Well, wow, good answer, Darren. Good answer. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Good luck with the book as well. You. You're going to be amazing. Thank you for being on Keep It Spiritual, Darren. Bless you. Thank you for having me, Chris. Thank you for the invite. Take care. That was the fabulous Darren Britton right there. If you want to know anything about him or to purchase his book, it's going to be out very soon. It's in the description below. And of course, as well, remember, do become a Patreon of Keep It Spiritual and keep me doing what I do best. And remember to give us a subscribe and a like as well. Until next time, this has been Keep It Spiritual. See you later.